Hey everyone, it's Tara Lynn. Welcome, welcome. Um, you may notice some different branding. Um, I am now known as Paint Rinse Repeat. Um, the painted cicada is growing once again. Um, so if it looks a little funny, that's what's going on. Um, but same fun lesson and I am so glad you're here. Um, tonight we're doing Doodle Bouquet. We're working with alcohol inks and um, I really love to include alcohol inks occasionally um, as an offering because they are actually my primary medium of choice. I, um, as an artist, prefer alcohol ink. I use it all the time. I absolutely love it and I think the reason why is because uh, it is... Um, it has a mind of its own. It's very um, different than any other medium. Um, you have to embrace uh, the alcohol ink. You have to embrace uh, mistakes and flow and just kind of let it do its thing. Um, so keep that in mind as we work through this. This is not um, a very exacting process. What we're gonna do today should be fun. Um, let loose, let the alcohol ink mix and blend. Um, we are going to finish it all up with some doodles to make it look beautiful. Uh, before we get started, I'm going to talk about the supply list. And um, no, for alcohol inks, the supply list is pretty specific. Um, so you can always start with less inks, less colors, um, different brands, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, so uh, as your substrate, your substrate is what we create on. Um, I recommend Yupo paper or Nara paper. So that's what I've got here. Um, and I'll be working just in a small size so that we can... Um, see it on camera. Uh, but you can work on glass, ceramic, um, any waterproof substrate or um, any non-porous surface. So uh, basically alcohol ink is the same ink that you will find in a Sharpie marker. And so if you put it on something porous, like a piece of paper, um, it's not going to come off, you know, it's going to absorb into that paper. But if you put it on something non-porous, for example, so here's my, my glass surface. You can't see that because there's a glare. Let's see. But you can see that I doodled there. Um, if I add a little alcohol to it, it's going to come right off. So let me block that glare again and then watch this. It just wipes right off. So, um, Basically, what we're working with today is Sharpie markers. So you could even create this exact same painting using Sharpie markers and some alcohol. Um, but you can create on any non-porous surface. So glass tile from Home Depot or Lowe's is fantastic. Um, you could get a frame even from um, the dollar store and inexpensive inexpensive frame with a piece of glass and you could paint on that glass. Um, so it's very versatile. There's a lot of um, surfaces you can create on. Sometimes I even create on canvas. Um, it doesn't completely lift and blend the same way on canvas, but sometimes I even do that. Okay, enough about the surface. Um, so you just need a variety of colors, right? Today we're creating um, a, bou a bouquet. And so the colors that I'm gonna wanna have um, are green so I can get some greenery and then really your flowers can be any color that you'd like so I suggested a red or a pink or both um, pretty much just your rainbow colors red orange yellow green blue purple um, you can certainly shake that up um, you can pick and choose which ones you like best um, I'm gonna to try to shake up the design just a little bit to show you a different option. So you can create either um, the colorway of the sample or what I'm working with this evening. Um, as far as alcohol inks go, there's a lot of different brands. So the most common that you're gonna see is Ranger. Um, you can find Ranger alcohol inks at Michael's, um, at Joann's, at most of the craft stores. Um, T-Rex inks. Um, I have a few of those. I'm going to be mostly using those tonight. Um, that's an online company. Um, their alcohol inks are pretty good. Um, Marabou is another uh, brand that is nice. I can only find those online typically. Um, Jacquard Pinata is another brand of alcohol ink uh, that I like as well. Um, usually I'll buy those online. Uh, 
But the main difference in alcohol ink is going to be the saturation, uh, the amount of pigment. Um, most alcohol inks that I've played with work similarly, and um, the only difference is the amount of color. So I can get the desired effect pretty much from any brand that I work with. Um, now I mentioned next isopropyl alcohol, 90% or greater. So I've got this 91. Usually I'll, I'll use anywhere between 91 and 99%. Um, the reason why uh, we want the percentage to be greater is because um, the percentage of alcohol, uh, what this means, uh, for example, 91% is the percentage of alcohol. So 91% of this liquid is alcohol, which means 9% of this liquid is other stuff. It's filler. Um, and we want to eliminate that filler because what happens is that filler doesn't evaporate the same way. That filler can leave grime on the paper. Um, so anything below 90% is difficult to work with in an art capacity. Um, I typically in the summer when things get humid here, I'm in Ohio, um, when things get humid here, I will use 99% isopropyl alcohol. Um, because the humidity will affect the alcohol. Right now, we're still it's still really cool and dry here, so I'm okay with 91. Anything in between um, is typically what you'll find at um, a grocery store or uh, a pharmacy, and that's where I get this. You can also buy isopropyl alcohol online, um, but that's what we need there. You can use it right from the bottle. My bottle has a little, um, like a squirter, tip on there. If your bottle doesn't have that and it's a pour bottle, sometimes these can be handy. This is just a little, um, I think this is Jane Davenport brand, but it's just a little um, like squirter bottle. It comes with a needle tip or a, a wider tip. Um, and I just use that to add to my paints. Um, I have got some isopropyl alcohol in a little cup here. Um, you could put it in a palette, uh, you could put it in a, a paint tray, whatever you have. Um, but much like you would rinse off watercolor in water, you rinse off alcohol ink in alcohol. So this is the solvent. Uh, um, isopropyl alcohol is the base and it will clean off your brushes, it will clean off your hands, it will clean off your surface. So I have some in here um, to clean off my brushes with, just like you would use water for watercolor. Um, I recommended a large, thick, black acrylic paint pen. Um, I'll be using Posca pens, but certainly Posca um, is not the only brand uh, that you can use. Any black acrylic paint pen is fine. Uh, paper towels to wipe off our brushes and our mess. Um, a weld paint palette. So when I say a weld paint palette, I just mean something that has, you know, a little weld to it, something that'll hold your, your alcohol ink, your paint. Um, so you could use this, you could put your paint on um, uh, any ceramic plate, you could put it on a palette. I mean, whatever you have is fine. Um, I've even got this glass desktop and honestly, I've put paints on here and used them that way as well. So um, you can put your anything to put your paint in. Um, if you don't have a little cup to clean off your brushes, you can use one of your little wells to put just clear alcohol in there and use that that way. Uh, round paint brushes in various sizes. So for the most part, um, what I'm going to use tonight, I've just got some round brushes. Um, I've got two and then I've got a really small one that maybe I can add some detail color coloring with. Um, the size of the brush is not as important as um, just having a brush to use. Um, and then a heat gun or hair dryer will speed along the process. Typically with alcohol ink, we don't really need to speed much along. It's pretty quick. Um, one of the things about alcohol ink is you have to get used to moving quickly and you have to get used to the way that um, it's going to spread and blend. Uh, so it's kind of a different, it's just a different medium to work with. Anyways, so that is all about the alcohol ink. And what we're going to do is kind of um, sketch to get started. So you might be able to see here on the glare, I kind of sketched out a little bit just so I would have a direction to go. Um, I like to keep things similar to the sample, but uh, I want you to be comfortable and um, confident enough to change up the design any way that you would like it. 
So first thing we're going to do is just kind of sketch things out. Um, so I'm going to get a color of my ink. I think I'm going to go with yellow just because yellow is pretty light. Now, when I use my alcohol inks from the bottle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some ink and then I'm going to add some alcohol, just a little. And I'm going to thin it out because this would be like, um, let me think what I could compare it to, like a uh, juice concentrate. You know, it's concentrated. It comes very highly pigmented. So I'm going to add a little alcohol just to thin that out a little bit. Um, you can sketch with any color, but just grab thin one. And then what I'm going to do is we're just going to kind of lay out our design. So in our sample, um, it's off center and we've got a vase and some flowers. So what I want to do is just kind of decide where my flowers are going to go and have an idea so that when I lay down my ink, I've got some direction. So I noticed in my sample, I've got kind of three big rose like flowers. So I can put those in there. Um, I've got three iris-like flowers so I can put those in there and this is just a sketch this is just going to give us direction so um, when I do my irises obviously the roses are just round um, I kind of one and then underneath I'll add a little this is kind of a big thing up top and then three sections underneath And then I've got lots of loose, kind of bunchy florals. So I'm just going to, wherever I've got those bunchy florals, um, I've got one here, I'm just gonna draw a line. One here. And again, this just gives us direction. This can all change as we work. So um, it's just here to guide us. Now, um, what you're gonna notice on your paintbrush, and this is gonna be hard to see because it's small, um, is your alcohol ink is gonna dry on there. So this is what I say, you need some alcohol to clean it off. So I'm gonna dip into here, it's gonna reactivate that, and then I can clean off my brush. So I can just dip and clean, just like you would with normal paint and paintbrush. Um, except we're using alcohol. So I've cleaned off my brush. Now I need to draw my... Let's see. Um, so in order to make this far, I made my square. So I draw a square down there. I can finish the top with a square. And I know up here, that's where the the twisty part of my jar is so I'll leave that as is and then somewhere in here I'm gonna need a water line you of course can make your base any shape it can be round it can be rectangle it can be square it can be whatever all right so I cleaned up that brush and I'm gonna leave that be now um, I'm gonna get some alcohol in these wells and I am going to use probably um, several drops of alcohol to each one drop of color I want this to be a nice uh, thin color if I need to make it darker I can start nice and light and you'll notice what happens is when we start um, actually painting our design uh, what's going to happen is this yellow is going to disappear. It's just going to move out of the way and blend out of the way, and we don't really have to worry about it. So we're going to thin down our paint. So whatever brand you're using most likely is going to need to be thinned down. All right, so I'm going to stick with pink. I am more of a pink person than a red person, but I might add in some red details. So I said red or pink. You can use whichever one you like better or both.
All right, so here are my inks, all nice and thinned out. Um, and what I'm going to do first is we are going to add a little bit of um, water and splatter to our background. So I'm going to get, this is kind of a small to medium sized brush. These are my alcohol ink brushes. So sometimes they need a little clean in before I get started. Um, but I'm going to dip in alcohol, dip in my blue pigment. And remember, this is supposed to be nice and light. And the first thing I'm going to do um, is I just want to put a little bit of this down here at the bottom. And this is just going to kind of Im give the impression of a surface. And I like to start here because what will happen is once you touch your brush to your page, you're going to see how that alcohol ink just kind of spreads like crazy and evaporates very quickly. So this for the most part is, is dry already. Um, that's how alcohol ink works. If you need it to dry quicker, um, if you're on any part of this, you want to get to dry faster. Um, you can blow on it lightly uh, with your breath and it'll kind of uh, finish that process off for you. Um, and you can see this is just kind of abstract and lumpy. Right? I just threw down some color not a big deal. Um, I've already got alcohol ink on this brush. I don't need to apply more pigment. I'm going to dip right into my alcohol and I'm going to start just filling in gaps in this jar here. If you need a little more pigment, that's fine. Right now we're going a little bit lighter. All right, next thing I'm going to show you is how to clear some space. So this is kind of an abstract painting. We don't want everything kind of bobby and lumpy and filled in like a coloring book. So I'm going to dip in alcohol. My brush is fairly clean. And then I'm going to kind of add some straight alcohol down here. You're going to see it's going to reactivate and push some of that out of the way. I'm going to do the same thing in this jar. Because it's a glass jar, there's going to be areas where uh, it's lighter or darker. So I added some alcohol, as you can kind of see from the glare there, and it reactivates it and it's going to push it out of the way and create some lines. I touch the glare real good. So um, I just kind of tap that in. I wasn't real specific about it. And I just let the alcohol move. And this is a good way to start because it gives you a feeling for what the alcohol does. And I'm really loose and free with this. So don't don't worry too much. And while we're down here, I'm going to, at the bottom, I'm going to get um, a little bit of this blue alcohol ink on my brush. And I'm going to do the outline uh, of my jar. And the reason why is because I want to get rid of this yellow. So I'm going to come in here with this blue and go right over the top of that yellow. And it might turn a little green, but for the most part, I'm going to push that out of the way. I'm not going to have to see that yellow. I don't want a lot of that yellow to be my final. It's my jar. Um, it's mostly boots. It's going to do that. Down here where my water line is. We are going to add some more layers. So if you get a little bit of green, makes a little bit of green. Don't worry too much about that. And we're covering a lot of this up with our doodles. Uh, I just didn't want it to read yellow down in the glass. We don't have lemonade down there. We've got water. So by applying that blue over the top, it's just going to mask that a little bit. Now, if you doodled in a different color, it's not going to matter, but I wanted to hide 
Now, when building a bouquet um, with the alcohol ink, anything that we put on top is going to remove what's underneath. So I'm going to visually start with my faraway power first. And um, in order to do that, I'm going to do is get some green. Remember, this is out just a little bit. I've got my little paintbrush. Um, and I am going to do some uh, of those looking, uh, pink stems. And so I'm going to go right over my line here with green. And green blend it nicely so I don't really have to worry too much about that. I'm not worried if my line bleeds or you know gets really big. I'm actually fine with that. Alright, so I'm gonna do four of these stems and I'm gonna make them pink when I do them. Um so I'm just gonna draw those in. And that's going to be my base to create those stems. All right. And you can see, right, this is messy. See how this is messy? Give yourself lots of grace and lots of forgiveness. This is an abstract doodle bouquet. So we are going to turn this into something gorgeous. Don't worry about the details. All right. So I'm going to get my round brush. I've got my super thin one. Put that down. I'm going to grab this um, kind of medium brown brush. I'm going to do this pink. Test my color there. I'm not a pinch of red. I'm not a red. Super. All right. Let's see what that turns into. Whoa. I like it. All right. Now, all I'm going to do is I am going to uh, build up the flowers around the centers of the stems by tapping my brush. And this is going to apply pigment. So um, let's start with this stem right here. I'm just going to tap, 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 tap all the way up. And those are going to blend out. I'm going to do these stems. First layer. So all these stems that I want to be pink or red. That's what I'm doing. Building up these flowers. I still have alcohol ink saturated in this brush. I'm going to dip right in the alcohol. That's going to make sure that what I have here is kind of loose. Um, and I'm going to come over here and maybe just spread out some of these perfect circles. It's going to reactivate some of this ink. Because I don't want these blooms to be perfect. All right, now I'm gonna get one drop of just completely saturated color. I'm not gonna mix it in with the diluted color. I'm gonna come back through and then just add a little bit of that around these stems as well. So this just tends to be a little darker when you use it right out of the bottle, nice and bright. I'm just, Put a little squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. Abstract flowers. So I come in and I just squiggle here, a little squiggle there. We're giving the impression of the flowers. Right, so now I'm going to clean off my brush. All right, now this is where I'm going to have a little variation. So. In my original, I did these flowers, the next set of flowers purple. Today I'm going to do them blue. I want them to be more um, Texas blue bonnets, but you can do blue or purple, whatever colorway you like. 
Um, so again, I'm gonna come through with my small brush and I'm gonna dip in my stem color and then I'm gonna decide where I want these to go. I'm just gonna follow the stems. So we're layering upwards. Anything underneath that's gonna get pulled into that ink. Again, your design can be any any placement. I've got four of these little stems here. I'm just gonna add a little more pigment to this. My blue is kind of light. All right, on these stems, I'm gonna vary the way I tap down the paint. So for these, I kind of did dots and then blended it out. Um, for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just add it in these swoops. Just kind of let it crisscross. off my brush and give it a moment to dry. See it's blending and kind of making a mess there. So when that starts to dry, I'm gonna do the kind of the same process I did before. I'm gonna dip in alcohol and I'm just gonna kind of come through again and I'm gonna reactivate portions of this. And I'm gonna do it kind of in that same swoop motion that I did when I applied that blue ink. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna create areas of lighter and darker color. your alcohol is wet um, don't be afraid to play with it a little bit you can kind of move it around there's no rules here just stay within the boundaries of the stems And you can already tell this is turning out very different from my original. The color's a little less saturated. Um, the design's gonna be a little different, but that's kind of the beauty of alcohol ink. It's just gonna do what it wants. We're just here to kind of guide it. Um, I do think I want this stem to come down a little more. So I'm just going to do that. I want to make sure some of this space down here gets filled in. And if you don't like what's going on here, the beauty of it is you can always reactivate it. So if there's, you know, areas where that blue um, has mixed with your doodle color wherever you started. Just go over it a little more, add a little more color. This is your painting. I'm just here guiding you. This is very abstract and loose right now. We're really gonna refine this at the end with our doodles.
All right, so about midway through our design, what I like to do uh, is add in some greenery. And because um, I want layers to appear, I wanna add greenery, not just at the end. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just rinse off my brush. So I dip it in my alcohol, wipe it off on my paper towel. Um, and I'm gonna come through and just grab some of this green. And wherever I see some open areas, I'm just going to draw in or apply some ink and make some leafy shapes. So down here, I might have some big swoopy ones like I did. That's simple. And I'm just applying color and I'm sort of giving it a little direction and for the most part I'm letting it turn into the leaf all on its own. It's going to decide what it wants to be. I'm also going to fill in some space down here. You can tap in a little green here and there if you feel like you know, you've lost some of your stem, whatever you wanna do. There's no right or wrong. I'm just adding some green in this medium step, in between step to kind of uh, be able to layer over the top of it. And it's messy. This is the hardest part, I think, with alcohol ink is embracing, um, oh my gosh, I've got comments. My comments just all showed up at the same time. Hello, hello, Deanna. Um, welcome. I see you need to find something to work on. Lots of fun. I hope you do. Hi, Zena. Yes, glossy photo paper absolutely works. Um, I use the backside of photo paper sometimes too as well. It's a nice inexpensive way to play. Um, if anybody is joining me late, don't forget you can always pause, rewind, um, anything you have to do to get where you want to be. Um, I'm super sorry I missed your comments. Like all of a sudden they came flooding through. So welcome everybody. All right, so I added some green. Um, we're going to layer on top of that, but wanted to get that started. All right, uh, the next thing I want to do is so I'm going to add in my iris like flowers. Um, so I'm going to dip in purple. Now I might um, have to do this in two layers. So on my sample, they're yellow. Uh, on this, I'm going to have them purple because irises are more commonly purple than yellow. But I did my doodling, my sketching in the beginning with yellow. Purple and yellow don't play very well together. So um, I may have to add another layer just to get rid of some of the mud that's created. But basically, um, on the top, I'm going to add kind of two swoops, almost like a reverse uh, rainbow or a horseshoe shape. So that's what my top is going to look like of my iris. Swoop, swoop. And then I'm just going to have three petals on the bottom. So one, two, three. And I just kind of draw those lines. And I can already tell you the purple I'm working with is light. So I'm going to get a darker color. My basic shape there so and don't worry too much about these looking kind of goofy remember that's what our our doodles at the end are gonna do they're really gonna bring some shape and dimension into what we're doing
my purple pigment is very light, so I'm just tapping in just a little more pigment. You know what you're using, you may not have to do that. And sometimes it picks up what's going on in the background and blends that into it's kind of the beauty of the mixing here. You can start to see this abstract come together, right? It's starting to look a little bit like a bouquet. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add just a pinch more pigment to my pinkish red color here. Uh, and we're going to add in some roses. Roses are pretty easy. Um, they're really just circles. So you can use, you know, a small to medium brush. I'm going to get some of that pink, pinkish red color that I'm using. I'm just going to put in a circle. I'm going to stop slightly before when it's end. Just don't forget that this is going to blend out. So I start small. And I'm just going to take that ink out just a little. Um, and remember that it's going to continue. The ink is going to continue a little bit beyond what you want. So I'm going to start with my circle shapes. And then once I kind of get that shape down, I can widen it just a little bit if I need to. Um, I can re-blend in. Some more of that pigment if it picks up and darkens. But I can start at the center of my flower and kind of work my way down so I have a little bit of control because uh, I know this is going to misbehave as alcohol does. And if your color turns a little muddy, just let it dry a little bit and then add a little ink in the middle and then go push some of that out. Alrighty, I'm really enjoying where this is going. Uh, what we're gonna do now is just add another little bit of color. Um, so we've got our, our first step of that bouquet pretty much finished. Um, what I'm gonna do uh, is while I was working, some of the alcohol evaporated out of my colors here. I like that, I'm happy about that, but I'm gonna adjust these colors just a little bit. So I'm gonna come back in. Um, and I'm going to add another pinch of color to my pink, just a drop or two, just to darken it. I'm going to add another, let's see, I've got yellow up here. I'm going to add a tiny bit of orange to it. I'm actually going to do that by scooping from the orange over here. Because I don't need too much orange to change a yellow, right? So we're just varying up these colors. So I darkened my pink, I darkened my yellow, um, and I darken this purple. Darken my blue. And I'm gonna darken my green. So we start with our lightest, and then as the alcohol evaporates, it gets a little more concentrated, and then we add a little more pigment, and that makes it more concentrated as well. Um, so now I'm just gonna add a little variation to these colors again. So I'm gonna dip into this pinkish red. I'm gonna hold my, br my brush up at the far end. That makes things just a little looser. And I'm just gonna tap in some color on this is more. Okay. 
This is all for variation. So I'm just tapping in some color. So you can see, especially here, just those very different shades. All right, so I did my pink and I'm gonna do these blues. off my brush. Do the same thing with the purple. So with the purple, I'm going to kind of just follow the same shape. So um, as long as it stays within the shape, the colors will just move out. So up here, I've got this nice big area I can just tap in some color to for my iris. Pick and choose areas you kind of want to just change. Just add a little more pigment to. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to follow, you know, the specific shape. You're just adding more color, more depth. Yes, absolutely. Um, you're only, I'm going to put this on the screen. So with alcohol ink, you absolutely have to acknowledge that you only have so much control. Um, you only have so much that you can um, do with it. It's going to do what it wants to do. And that's part of the fun, I think, with alcohol ink. Um, certainly this medium is not for everybody. I can see this definitely stressing people out. Um, there's a lot of um, abstractness going on here, right? We don't see um, the details in the flowers. It's just kind of color blobs. It's like almost if you wear glasses and you have your glasses off. Um, you don't see those fine details. Um, but that's what I absolutely love about it. Um, and learning to control it in small ways. Um, in the ways that you can is is how you can start to make really beautiful things. Uh, but you always have to embrace that freedom with the ink. All right, the last flowers I need to uh, add a little more color to are these roses. So I'm just going to start and kind of add some lines in the roses. And lines are going to blend out, right? They're not going to stay very liney. It's going to add different patches of color. And that's what we want. I'm actually really satisfied with how this is turning out. This is just like I want it to be. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my green now. This is actually, um, you'll notice it will evaporate on you. So my green, I'm just gonna add a touch or two of alcohol because it really did evaporate a lot. And so I wanna reactivate that here in the pan. So I'm gonna pull some more of that pigment. Actually got a hair on my brush. That doesn't make for a good painting. All right, there we go. So I've got some green. Um, and what I'm gonna do with these greens, um, so I'm just going to you know, add a little bit of, this is really pigmented here. I might have to go in and change this. Add a little bit of color in there. Um, I might even, just to shake things up a little bit, 
add a touch of blue into this green. So you can mix alcohol inks just like you can mix paint. Um, the pigments will mix. So I added a little bit of blue in there. It's just going to change this a little bit. So wherever I've got green, I can kind of just tap it into this color. idea really is just to have variations so don't be afraid to play I mean don't be afraid to you know kind of scribble with your paintbrush you can also tap just the tiniest bit of green anywhere you see white if you've got white kind of popping through and you want to fill in that space you can do that as well and clean off that brush so it's ready to use later in a lot of ways, we're getting pretty close to finished with the actual alcohol ink. All right, so I'm going to return to my small brush. We're going to add some swoops of color down in here. So, uh, returning, oops, I don't know why I have this out, not even using it. Okay, returning to my green, I need to add some stems. And again, our stems are going to bleed. That's just how it is. So um, I'm just going to pull some of this down. You, know, you can certainly add in as many stems as you want. Um, I just pull it in with my paintbrush. If it bleeds out, let it bleed out. That's what it's going to want to do. And that's okay. So I'm going to show you here. See, my paint wells are really evaporating. I almost have next to no blue, but I can reactivate this by adding alcohol and mixing that up. Now, this the less alcohol I add, the more pigment is going to be in there. The more alcohol I add, the thinner it's going to be and the less pigment. So you can always test it by just tapping a bit on your paper towel. Um, this is going to be fairly dark. I'm going to start dark um, and I might just swoosh in a little bit of blue at the bottom on each side, a swoosh, a swoosh. And then I'm going to come around again and really accent this water uh, line here. And I'm going to thin it out a bit. I'm going to use this larger brush. I didn't really even thin that much. That's okay. Maybe have a line across the top where the twist top goes. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of outline those edges. Just in areas adding a little bit more color. Remember all of our details coming in with our pink pen. All right, so I've got my bouquet. I'm in love with this bouquet. What I'm going to do now is add a little bit of splatter. Splatter is my favorite. If splatter is not your thing, you can skip this step, um, but I like it. Um, and the main areas that I'm going to want to splatter are the white spots. And what this is going to do is just make it look intentional. It's going to look like, you know, we wanted that background to be white, but we've got a little pizzazz going on. Um, and so I do that by dipping my brush into whatever color I want to splatter. So let's say I want a little bit of green. And then I just tap lightly. And the green's going to drop and it's going to spread. And now I have a green splatter. This is addicting. I love splatter. So I'm going to dip into some more of these colors. And uh, I typically I feel like less is kind of more with splatter. So, you know, if I use a little red up here, maybe a little red down here, and that's good. I don't need to go crazy with all of these colors. I just add in a little bit. Um, here's a little purple. Maybe I'll do purple splatter right here. 
just a little bit. I'm just incorporating some of these colors I used. Um, and my final splatter color will be blue. And I'm mostly gonna keep the blue down at the bottom. I use my small paintbrush for that and I got, you know, medium sized dots. If you use a large paintbrush, you're gonna have giant globs of splatter. So just go gentle with it, use a small brush. Um, and, and that's the painting portion. Um, so you can repeat this process using the exact same colors and your result is gonna be very different each and every time. Um, you can repeat this process uh, with the exact same placement of flowers and your result is gonna be different each and every time. Um, so embrace that, embrace the fluid, embrace the, the flow and the fun of it. Um, you could do this lesson over and over and every time you're gonna get a different result. That's what I absolutely love about alcohol ink. Um, also kind of a tip, is that you can reuse this so you can let this set out for you know 30 minutes and this will completely dry um, you can save this pigment and reactivate it later and use it again it doesn't go bad um, the alcohol just evaporates out so you can reactivate it with alcohol and continue making these bouquets um, and oops and uh not waste any alcohol ink um so i'm just going to set this to the side uh, what I want to do now, um, I feel like my painting for the most part is dry, uh, but I'm going to pull out my hair dryer. I'm going to zap this just really quickly. If you don't have a hair dryer, actually, I don't need to do that. Here's what you can do is just, uh, move some air, oops, move some air along the top. Of your piece and the airflow is just going to keep that nice and dry anything that may have had a little bit of moisture will dry Oops. sorry my supply list keeps falling over from the wind there all right so when you're sure that this is dry you can get your black uh, paint pen out and doodle. I'm going to lower my camera just a little bit so you can see these doodles a little bit better. All right, so uh, I'm going to start down here. And the first thing I'm going to doodle is just the outline of this base here. So. Um, remember when you're doodling, be free, be loose. Don't worry too much about the details. So the edge, you know, that's just a twisty turny thing. Your lines don't have to be complete. So I outline that jar. I'm going to give a little scoop in the back just to give the impression that, you know, yes, there is a bottom. Up here where my water line is, I'm going to add just a few lines, you know, two little lines in the back. Most of my lines are going to be up here in the front. Now that we've got that water line, I'm going to just doodle, uh, sketchy doodle some of these, uh, the bottom of the stems here. So again, don't make full complete lines. We're not doing a coloring book outline. This is doodly. So, you know, just kind of sketchy half lines, very light. and follow the, the path that the inks have decided they wanted to go. You know, this one here kind of folds over, so. I'm gonna start outlining those green leaves right there. I'm gonna just work my way up. Down here on the table, 
No, there's no right or wrong here. Just a few little swoops. And it starts to look so different, doesn't it? Just by adding some of these lines. Um, up here on my glass jar, I'm going to add just over here in the corner a little line there. That just gives the jar a little bit of shape. So as I'm, you know, working with greenery here, don't be afraid to add in sketch lines. This is loose and free. Just follow the shape of your, your green ink. You know, if it's smooth, make smooth lines. Um, if it's kind of lumpy, you know, we've got different flowers, so you can have different, different leaves. Let your shapes indicate, you know, what kind of leaf it's going to be, what kind of doodles you draw in. And there's some little leaves kind of peeking out in here, a little green. I'm just going to add leaves wherever I see a little bit of green peeking out. So that's our greenery. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is my my pink flowers here. Um, so again, I don't want to just draw the the center, but you know maybe a line here and there down those the stalks of those flowers just to give direction. Um, and these I want to be kind of clusters, so I'm going to. Just kind of create some clusters and I'm going to use the pigment of the inks to help me decide where I add those little clusters. So wherever you see some edges, that's where you kind of just, you know, add some clusters in. And the doodles that you put over the top of these flowers are going to help your eye determine, you know, what kind of flowers you think them to be. So you can doodle really however you want. camera doesn't like when I go close it says no don't do that and so when I switch to these blue flowers I'm just going to change the way I doodle it a little bit so over here I think I want these to be um, I'm getting the impression that these, you know, are more round. So maybe I just come through when I accentuate the roundness of those spots. And it's going to give, you know, a very different impression than the ones that we, you know, just did kind of swoopy, the clusters. So don't be afraid to let the inks help you determine um, what kind of doodles you make.
Now for the irises, you can kind of do these two ways. So um, in the sample, I kind of, you know, uh, had two petals up at the top. So um, my doodle kind of, you know, if this is the top of the flower and then we've got our three pieces at the bottom, I kind of broke that in half. And then, you know, let that come down at the bottom. Another way that you can do an iris is just to have that big um, flowy top and then the three at the bottom. It's totally up to you how you decide to do your iris. Uh, you can also just let your, you know, let your work decide how you want to do it. You know, remember uh, in this process you're doodling. So try as much as you can just to lift and move your lines. You don't want complete, you know, solid outlines. And for roses, the technique I usually do when I doodle, so if this is your rose, um, I've got the ink on there. I kind of want to maybe accentuate that center with a dot. Come on, camera. I should have never moved it. My camera does not like being low. There it goes. So I accentuate the center, and then I'll just kind of add a few curves to the edge. And they're kind of just like C-shaped little swoops. So there's my circle, my center, and I just kind of make some lines out. Fast and free doodles. And there you have it, friends. There is our doodle bouquet um, with alcohol inks. It was really fun painting with you. It was nice to see some of you pop on live. Um, I can't wait to see what you created. Really, the last step here is just to sign your piece. Um, frame it and share it with everybody in the group. So uh, if you have created with me before, you probably uh, know where to share it. Thank you so much, Deanna. I can't wait to see yours when you get a surface to create on. Um, if you missed the very beginning of the video, I did talk about some surfaces. Um, one of my favorites to create on is just a, a, a piece of glass from a frame at the dollar store, and then you can pop it back in a frame. Um, and it looks really pretty. And if, you know, the glass is clear, you just put a white piece of paper behind it. Um, it's a really inexpensive way to start playing with alcohol ink. Um, but some things have changed. I mentioned that in the front of the video. So if you don't know where to find the group, um, if you're already in the group, it's just renamed. But if you need to find it, um, I would love for you to share your work in there with me. It's facebook.com slash groups slash paint, rinse, repeat. Um, or you can tag me on socials at paint, paint rinse, repeat. Um, or you can just, uh, if you can't figure that out, you can always email me, Tara, at paintrinserepeat.com, and I will be happy to share your beautiful work on my page. Um, but I'd love to see you in the group, uh, facebook.com slash groups, paint, rinse, repeat. Um, we had a big rebranding. Um, I'm still kind of finish, finishing that launch um, and announcing everything, but um, in the process of opening uh, a local studio as well, and it was just time for some new changes. Um, and I am still super excited to connect with all of you online. Uh, special shout out to my supporters. Uh, my supporters get everything I do for $4.99 a month. That includes each and every event on my calendar. Um, for more information, you can just go right to my Facebook page or uh, you 
you can follow that address on the screen there, facebook.com slash become supporter slash paints, paint, rinse, repeat online. Um, it is super cost effective. You get everything that I do. Um, even if you only take one of my classes a month, um, it's still a really fun option. So I encourage you to try that. Shout out to my supporters. You guys make everything possible. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I can't wait to see what you all have created and I will see you next time. Bye-bye everyone. <laughs>